Ah, man, that was a bad clap. Ah, that was still kind of bad. What's up, guys? Gary to a self-taught dev. Today, we are going to do LinkedIn's Agile Methodologies Assessment. Um, I work in an Agile environment right now, so I imagine I'll, I'll pass this. Um, but with how obscure some of the HTML assessment questions were, or like the front-end developer assessment questions were, maybe not, actually if they have questions that are like that obscure with this assessment. If it's like general stuff, should do pretty good. If you want to connect on LinkedIn or anything like that, uh, my my, um, what the, my URL is in the description. So check that if you want to be friends on LinkedIn. And uh, let's get going. So Agile Methodologies, 15 minutes, 15, uh, one and a half minutes per question. Yeah. Uh, score in the top 30% to earn this badge. Interesting. I thought it used to say you have to score above like 70% or something like that. So that's like the opposite. Anyway, start, let's get going. How are we doing? All right, the team has an incomplete story at the end of a sprint and wants to claim partial credit for the work completed. What should you do? We don't do partial credit at the end of the sprint in my team. So ask the product owner to revise the acceptance criteria so it can be accepted and counted. Ask the product owner to accept the story with the promise that the team will complete the work next sprint. Explain that in Agile, I'm gonna go with C because it's the longest. So working software is the primary measure of progress to help. Um, then help the team identify the lesson to be learned from the experience. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's that one. Ask them to si ask them to slice the story and reflect the work done. No, I'm, I think it's C because that just one. It's the longest answer, and usually when you're doing tests, the longest answer is the correct one statistically. Um, and two, I, I, from what I know about agile methodology, I feel like this is the right answer. So we're gonna go with that. All right, uh, number two, the team is complaining that they send requests for clarification to the product owner, but these requests seem to go unanswered. What what action should you take? Develop a S SLA that defines, um, I think it's this one, service level agreement that defines cert uh, certain response times for different types of requests and ask the product owner to sign off on it. Um, so that basically will make the product like say, hey, if we ask a question for clarification, you have to respond in like eight hours or two days or something like that. Um, if there is a question about a story, tell the developers to, to I'm going to zoom in on this, actually, because maybe that's we can make this bigger so you guys can see that easier. Uh, tell the developers to use their best judgment, avoid delay and discuss the issue at the sprint review. That doesn't seem like a very good solution. Um, schedule a problem solving session with the product owner and other team members. That doesn't, I mean, maybe, but like, I feel like this is better still. Send a note to the product owner saying that delays in completing the work will be their responsibility, not the team's. Um, no, personal responsibility and like accepting responsibility, owning your work. It's like a big thing. So I don't feel like even if you're not an agile methodology, like an agile environment, that's like an important thing in life. Like make sure you own whatever you're doing. Um, but yeah, just because of that, I feel like this isn't the right one. I'm gonna go with A. So next, <clears throat> I wonder if you inspect the code, if there's a way you can, if you can see the correct answer in the source code anywhere on the client side. I don't have time to do that right now, but oh well, I did that for this there's some like word game where you have to, I'll talk about that at the end of the video actually, um, because we only have a minute left for this one. What is a lean canvas? No idea. It is used to decompose the solution into epics, features, and stories. Um, maybe. It is a technique for projecting growth in market share. It is a template for lightweight business plans that make your assumptions explicit. It is a tool to plan future product releases. Uh, I'm not sure. What is a lean canvas? Um, it is a one-page business template created by app uh, mm, that helps you deconstruct your ideas into key assumptions. Okay, so I don't think it's this. Like, to make your assumptions explicit, this seems like the right answer now. Also, it's the longest. Let me know if this is the right answer, if you know, in the comments below. Next, number four. This, a, the scaled agile framework advocates that if you measure only one thing, what should you measure? Scaled agile framework. Uh, measures one thing. All right, cool. In conclusion, if you want to measure one thing, the cost of delay, that's what I was going to go with if I just had to take a random guess. I should do my random guess before I Google this, and then uh, I feel like that'd be better to do. Um, we have 50 seconds. So what was the last question about? What was I going to explain? Yeah, there's some little game where you have like five guesses, <clears throat> and you're trying to guess the word of the day, right? And you'll guess like, I don't know, like the word five, right? Um, and if a letter is in the correct place, it's green, 
if it's not in the correct place, it, but it's in the word, it's yellow. And then if it's not in the word at all, it just doesn't get a color. But um, I was digging around in the inspector on that. And if you look in the, um, like the cookies maybe, or the, there's something, they, they store the answer on the client side, basically. Um, which is fun because you can like change the answer and like make it whatever you want it to be. Or you can just see the answer and get it right in one guess um, and then post it to social media and be like, I got it one guess. Yeah, except you just hacked it. So except it's all client side. So I don't know. That's really hacking. Anyway, five seconds. So next one. Um, what is the team for a team? Wait, what is the term for a team member who is T-shaped? Jack of all trades. Um, no, like so T-shaped. So that'd be like shallow knowledge and then depth, right? Um, generalizing specialist, apprentice developer, cross-functional. We're, I'm gonna, I think it's generalizing specialist. Well, actually generalizing, ah, uh, cause like T implies, that doesn't imply a general, right? T implies, well, maybe they have like a general knowledge of everything and then they specialize in one thing. Um, what is the term for a team member who is T-shaped? Uh, the T-shaped employee is someone who has specialized knowledge and skills in particular areas. Well, da, 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 da. the notion of a T-shaped employee is quickly emerging. Okay, what does this say? The image, breadth of experience, depth, right? But 30 seconds left. All right. Uh, what is meant by T-shaped person who has deep knowledge and skills in one particular area, specialization, along with the desire to, and ability to make connections across different disciplines. Um, these aren't giving me the answer that I want. I think I'm just going to go with the one I have guessed because we have 14 seconds left. So yeah. Uh, all right, number five, six. Uh, what is the product owner's role in deciding the priority of work in the sprint backlog? Uh, I think they're like the, the one that decides the priority of stuff. So I don't think it's A or C. We're gonna skip those. The, the developers prioritize work in this. It, they cannot complete it. Um, I don't think it's that one either. The PO, product owner, should prioritize the items in the sprint backlog. I think that's what it should be, like at least in our team. Well, in our team, it's kind of like the product owner and then the lead dev. And then like, we're all, basically, our whole team's on the calls where we decide that. Um, but I feel like it's mostly the product owner and the lead dev's decision. Uh, so we're gonna go with B. But what are the other answers? None, the scrum master should prioritize the work in the sprint backlog. Uh, maybe. None, the developers should prioritize the work in the sprint backlog. I don't think the developers, from my perspective, I wouldn't really know like what's a high priority for clients. I feel like, or like, I feel like the product owners or scrum master would have more of an insight over which tasks would be a higher priority. Um, but we're gonna go with B just cause I feel like that's probably the right answer. So next, what is not a technique used for splitting user stories? Splitting by alternative paths, that doesn't sound good. Um, split compound user stories, so that sounds like valid. Cause like if you have like a eight point story or like a, uh, what's the next above eight, 16, um, like a high point story and you want to split that into smaller stories. I assume that would be called like split compounding, split compound user stories, uh, split by interface. That's an interesting concept. Split by line of business, LOB. Um, I feel like it's A still. Let me know if this is right or not. I don't really feel like Googling this one. Again, this is uh, just to give you guys an idea of what the assessment's like. So like if I fail the assessment, like no big deal. Um, this was to give you an idea of what the, set, what the questions are like. So when you take the, cut, the test, you kind of have an idea of what to expect. Actually, ideally you should pause at the beginning of every question, read it, put a guess in, um, and then see what I say and uh, see, maybe yours was right. All right, we're gonna go with A. Next, <clears throat> which statement is not true about pair programming? The code produced by two developers who are collaborating is typically higher quality than those who are working alone. Um, I mean, I, I think that's probably true. In pair programming, two developers share one computer and take turns at the keyboard. Uh, that's kind of true. It is, I mean, mm, yeah, kind of, I guess. It is. It has been discredited because it's too expensive. That's not true. It is a great way to teach someone who is new to the team. I'm gonna go with this one, because I don't think, like if your team solely works in pair programming, like I don't feel like that's a smart way to go about it. Eventually, like you wanna make sure your developers are competent enough to work on their own and like do tasks by themselves. But like pair programming, like once a sprint or like once every couple of sprints with somebody who's better um, than like pair up a strong developer and a weak developer. So like the weak developer can learn hopefully. Um, or like there've been times I'm pair programming with people who are like equal to my skill level and I've like learned stuff. Like I didn't know you could do ch um, get checkout dash and then that would just switch to the previous branch you were on. So I think it's C. 
we're gonna go with that. Which statement describes the flow of work in a scale in the scaled agile framework? Um, it is a pull system. It is a push at the top and pull from the bottom. It is neither push nor pull. It is a push system. No idea. Uh, what are we looking for? What's the keyword? Uh, scaled agile framework flow of work. So scaled agile framework agile framework uh, flow of work. Uh, what is Scaled Agile Framework? Da, 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 da. Uh, what is the system? It is a push system. So it is a push system. Boom. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. The team is not going to complete its sprint commitment. As the team facilitator, what should you do? Point out the reasons why and collaborate on solutions. Um, I don't know if pointing out the reasons why is helpful, but like collaborating on solutions seems like a good choice um report this at the end of sprint review i mean there's that's like i assume you'll have to do that at the end of sprint review but there's probably other steps you should take too. advise the po as soon as possible so they can yeah i think that's probably a good idea uh ask the po to extend the sprint i don't think that's a good idea i don't think nope i don't think the sprints ever get extended is that a thing uh, when i worked at honey we never extended the sprint when i work where i work now we've never extended the sprint i don't think extending the sprint's a thing uh, so we're going to rule out D, report this at the sprint review. Uh, like you should, they, I, guess, I imagine they'll do that, but that doesn't like help at all really now, like advising the PO as soon as possible allows them to take steps, like hey, advise the clients, like, Hey, maybe this is probably not going to be completed this sprint. Um, just take the steps you need to account for that or something like that. Uh, anyway, we're going to go with C. I'm going to ramble it on and just hit next. All right, 11, which statement about technical debt is true? Technical debt is what the product owner owes the developers if they work a lot of overtime to complete the sprint. That's funny and not the answer. Uh, technical debt is another name for bugs. Um, I mean, like, kind. Uh, I mean, it's not, that's not exactly it. It is at the product owner's discretion to allocate effort to reduce technical debt. I don't think that's it either. Adding technical debt should be avoided at all costs. Yeah, which one of these is it? Um, I mean, technical debt should definitely be avoided, but like at all costs, I don't think, I don't know about all costs. There's, I'm sure there's some situations in which it's it would be acceptable to add to the technical debt in order to get something done on time. Um, it is at the product owner's discretion to allocate efforts to reduce technical debt. That's probably like, because if the product owner is deciding the priority of tasks, then deciding the priority to um, reduce technical debt is probably something that they would decide as well. Technical debt is another name for bugs. It can like it can be bugs, I guess. I think I feel like it's B. It's not C, that's for sure. But we're gonna go with B just because that feels like the right, most correct answer to me. Again, if you know the correct answer, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you're learning stuff on this, help um, do a thumbs up on YouTube so they know I'm doing good stuff, and I will make more videos like this too. Uh, next, twelve. What does collective ownership mean? It means like the team owns the problem. The team, not the individuals, receive performance evaluations. Um, I mean, it's in the same vein, kind of. Uh, the team shares equally, equally in the profits that the product generates. Not, no, nah, that's probably not it. Uh, if someone is at fault, then the whole team is at fault. That makes, that sounds appropriate. Um, every member of the team can make changes to any part of the code as necessary. I mean, that's, mm, that's probably not it either. So we're going to rule out B and D. Um, so A, the team, not the individuals, receive performance evaluations. Hmm, I think individuals would still receive performance evaluations because like the team, I imagine like the team would receive one and then individuals would see, receive one as well. So it's kind of like, hey, this is what we can work on better as a team. And then individually, this is what each person can work on to improve their own skill set or stuff. If someone is at fault, the whole team is at fault. I imagine it's that, right? Because like if you like the code base I work on is my code base. It's also the lead devs code base and every other member of the team's code base. So like if something gets into the code base that's bad because I didn't I wasn't paying attention during code review or something like that then that's that's my, that's on me um, as it is every other member of the team we have eight seconds so we're gonna go with this cool which of these traits is most important for being an effective team facilitator having a type a personality absolutely being extroverted ooh that's also true just kidding none of these are important uh, being someone who takes charge being self-aware 
Ah, uh, which is most important. I feel like these are all important things. The being extroverted, like you don't have to be extroverted. I'm actually pretty introverted. Uh, I might not seem like it on this video because I just I'm talking a lot, but uh, I just there's like a switch you can flip in your brain. It's hard, especially if you're a developer and you're like coding all day. Um, like sometimes I'll be coding all day and then I'll like hang out with my girlfriend at the end of the day and like my like logical thinking brain is like just on hard and. Uh, I'm just kind of like more quiet, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, which of the, we got to focus, we have 40 seconds, we got to focus, being self-aware, I feel like it's somebody who takes charge, right, because like, you need to take responsibility and have ownership of the stuff, team facilitator, is that like the lead dev, or is that different from the product owner, we don't have like a team facilitator, we have like a scrum, scrum master, I think, right, yeah, and then uh, the product owner, and then lead dev, and then Maybe he is the team facilitator, actually. Hmm. That could, could make sense. I feel like it's C, though, so we're going to go with that. What is the best time to update the team's burndown chart? Um, isn't it, like, daily, right? To manually update the burndown chart? Does that not, like, automatically happen as you're moving tickets through your system? Um, before the sprint retro. So we, you'd want to do it daily, definitely. So I imagine it's either B or C. Before quarterly planning, that sounds way too infrequent because like you want to know it during the sprint. Uh, before the retro, so that happens like once a sprint usually, so that is also not it. Um, after the daily stand-up, before the daily stand-up. Probably after the daily stand-up, right? Because you get everybody's update and then you're like, all right, cool, so this task is done now, this task is done now, this task is in, ready for review or ready for progress. Um, so we're going with after the daily stand up because that, that feels like the right answer. What is the definition of capacity? Like how many story points a developer can handle per sprint or like the team can handle per sprint? It's my initial guess. Uh, let's look at this longest answer here. It is the an adjusted. Uh, it is an adjustment to velocity used in sprint planning to account for reduced availability of team members during the upcoming sprint. Uh, that sounds pretty close, and it's the longest answer, so we're probably gonna go with, uh, we are probably going to go with that. Um, but let's read these others just to be safe. It is the maximum number of stories that will be allowed in the sprint. That also sounds good. It is the number of teams that have, it is the, it is the number of teams that a team facilitator can support concurrently. False. It is an inventory of the team's knowledge and skills that is used to plan the work they do. So it's not either one of those. That one sounds right, but this is longer and sounds more right. So we're gonna go with that. View results, we passed, boom. Top 15%, all right, what's up? 2.5 million people took this, ooh, that's a lot. Cool, so I uh, hope you learned something. Uh, again, if you wanna connect on LinkedIn or Instagram or any of my social medias, uh, those are all in the description if you come, you wanna come be friends. Discord link is in the description as well. If you wanna come talk to me about tech or be like, hey, this answer was wrong. This is probably why you weren't in the top 1%. That would be appreciated as well. Um, or if you're like, you got every question right. Good job. That'd be cool too. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the cool content I'm putting out. I'm working on an HTML and CSS course and basically like a guide of like how to go from like zero to ready for front end developer work. Get my hands on the screen here. Um, so make sure you uh, pay attention for that. That's another good reason to hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you got any questions, comments, leave them in the description below. Um, Discord link is in the comments. Discord link is in the description. That's what I want to say. Uh, we took over the self-taught dash dev. Maybe it's not dash dev. Maybe it's just self-taught dev subreddit. Link for that's in the description too. Uh, I think I'm done promoting stuff. So ew, one other thing, if you make EDM beats or like music or anything like that, I need some new background music for my channel. So feel free to come hit me up if you're cool with me using your music for free. I will shout you out in the like comments, not in the comments, in the description of every video. Um, so just throwing that out there too. And I think that's about it. So I will catch you guys next time. Peace. Bro.